My grandmother lived to 102 years old. Her favorite food was soba noodles. Bounce. Hello, I'm Sonoko Sakai. I'm the author of Japanese Home Cooking. Today, we're gonna make soba together. This is a very finely milled, fresh buckwheat, but when you put the rustic, coarse buckwheat, we call it country style. So today we're making country style soba noodles. And we're gonna combine it with the all-purpose flour. So I wanna blend it together. It's called buckwheat, but it has nothing to do with wheat. It's related to the rhubarb plant. In Japan, we have always treated it as a medicinal food. The Japanese monks were given buckwheat groats to eat for nourishment when they went into long periods of meditation in the woods and the mountains. Because buckwheat is a complete protein, you almost don't need anything else. We're gonna start making the noodles. I'm gonna add water. The amount of water that I add is about 50% of the weight of the flour. The fresher the flour, the less water you need. Too much water is gonna make it into a mushy noodle because buckwheat is water soluble. And when you cook it, it wants to fall apart. Putting hands in flour is a restorative process. It allows you to focus on something really simple. I was in the film business thinking about budgets and cast and travel and so much logistics involved and pressure. I love to cook, I've always cooked. And I said, well, I really wanna go back into cooking. Maybe I could do something with noodles. And here was something, nobody was bothering me except the flour and the water. I'm gonna start gathering this up into a ball. I tell my students when I teach soba making is, I want you to clean the bowl. If you have anything left on the bowl, you haven't finished your job. So I'm gonna start kneading it. And you could see that it's a workout. I call this soba yoga. Like I'm actually putting my whole weight into it. It's the whole movement. When you can't go any further, the width of my cutting board is about this much. I just turn it this way and I do a little jelly roll. Or like a little snail, right? And then you push it again. There's not that much kneading to do. You over knead it and the dough starts to dry out. You wanna finish the noodles in 20 minutes. Here I have scars and I wanna make a beautiful disc. I'm gonna hold it with my left hand and here's my thumb as a guide. It's gonna hold the middle and I'm gonna start folding it, see? I'm taking the side of my hand and just bringing it to the middle of the dough and you will see that I'm actually gonna turn this into like a flower and this is called a chrysanthemum fold. They do this to get the air out. This is probably the most important step in soba making because you're making sure that all the water is equally distributed, you're feeling the dough, you know more or less how stable it is. And once you have flour that you want, then you're gonna close it. It should feel like an earlobe. See, this is Mount Fuji here. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to close like this, close the top. So then I'm gonna turn it sideways and I'm gonna really completely close it. Just push it down. Tapioca flour doesn't change the ratio of the dough. And I'm gonna leave a little belly button and I'm gonna work around it to press it down so that I get an even thickness. I'm using this as a guide. I don't like to use machines. The whole process from sifting the flour to the cutting part is all done by hand. So if you go to a real artisan soba place, maybe you have 20 max. So if you go into a soba place with 100 seating, you know they're not making it by hand. So now we're gonna take these pins and we're gonna start rolling the dough. You have your hands, cat's paw. The second knuckle sits right here and you see me rotating the dough about every 30 degrees. I want to keep it around the same thickness. The next thing I'm gonna do is to turn this into a square. So here's a quick way to turn this into a square. Roll it up. And this is kind of fun. Okay. Use the momentum, push it forward. So you go like that. It has to make a snappy sound like that. I'm trying to create a corner right here. So I did it five or six times. I turned it like this. So because I don't want to lift the dough. I don't want to hurt the dough. So here's one corner. So I need three more corners. 
to make it into a square. So then I roll this side. And then I go one, two, three, four, five, six. Then you're tempted to just use your hands. No, treat it like a fabric. And then go this way. In this age where everything is digital and convenient and all you have to do is boil some water and drop your ramen noodles into the boiling water. This is like really inconvenient food. It's slow, but it, I think it has a real meditative quality. Just doing something very simple. The end result is so much more nourishing for everybody. Cleaning up the edges, there's some areas that are still a little bit thick. And what you want is about 1 16th of an inch. So now it's time to cut the noodles. I am going to put some tapioca flour on it. This is a, a starch so that the noodles don't stick together. So you have to be quite generous. Do not try to lift your dough with your hands. Use a rolling pin as a guide and fold it in half. Just one crease here. And then let's put some more flour. And then gently fold the rest. And then I'm going to bring this close to me so I could cut it. It's a soba knife. This is a cutting guide. It sits right on top here. You're going to just set your knife right on top of the dough. Hold this board down and you're going to tap it. And then you lift your knife and then forward motion. Tap, come back. You want to do it in one single motion. That's why you have a long knife. So this actually acts like a spatula and you could slide it. And you separate your noodles. Now you flip it over and you you bounce this side. And we're gonna cook it for just about 80 seconds. I'm just gonna move it once and that's it, and gently. And then I'm gonna wash it. I don't wanna flip it, okay, or shake it. I'm just hitting the bottom of the colander so I don't break the noodles. This is soba served cold with a walnut dipping sauce made with ground walnuts, kombu stock, dried shiitake mushrooms, bonita flakes, with a little soy sauce, meeting, and sugar. And there's a variety of ways to eat soba noodles. The real geeky people have to eat soba cold. You wanna taste the noodles. This is the classic way. You could just take a few strands and don't drown it. Just like a third of the way up and go. You make a mess. You wanna get the noodles up to your mouth quickly because if you do it slowly, then it's gonna get mushy, right? So you wanna go fast. In this case, the walnut sauce adds the nuttiness to it. There's a little bit of sweetness to it too. And the chew is nice. For the recipe, click below or buy my book. In Japan, you walk by a soba noodle shop, you see all these salarymen slurping noodles. As I became really obsessed with noodles, I feel like it's part of the ritual.